The start of the Zaxxon Trail is at a sports complex on a hill in the middle of nowhere. So you don't have a choice but to travel there on the day before. There are worse places to spend the night. The main event here is a 70km Ultra, but I was only doing the half distance version. A quite unique feature of this race is that, after only a short stretch on dirt roads, it starts with a long descent on single trails. Since I'm strong downhill, I wanted to be at the front of the pack to avoid being held up. So I did the thing everyone agrees you shouldn't do. I started fast. And while I impress you with my skillful navigation of this technical downhill trail, let me tell you the embarrassing thing that happened off camera a minute or so after the start, before we even got to the single trail. I noticed my watch wasn't in the mood I prefer. So I changed its setting and while doing so stumbled and fell. On pretty much the least technical ground of the whole race. Trail runners look out for each other, so the first runner behind me immediately asked if I was okay. I reassured him I was. Trail runners also poke fun at each other, so immediately after that someone a few meters behind observed in his most serious voice, very difficult section. Well, I deserve that. Should have put my watch in the right mode before the start. Don't text behind the wheel, kids. Finding a good pace at the start is always difficult. But I've done that many times. Although never with the adrenaline of a fall surging through my veins. After a few minutes, I start enjoying the profoundly uneven mountain bike trail leading us into the valley. Five kilometers in, we reach the lowest point and my error in judgment became apparent. My thighs felt completely burned out. Apparently that's what happens when you do a fast descent before your muscles are completely warmed up. Even though the next few kilometers had good roads and little ascent, I couldn't find a good rhythm. In the hills my pace compared a bit better with the runners around me, but the feeling in my legs wasn't promising. And also the little things conspired against me. My race number kept coming loose after my fall at the start had ripped off one of the clips attaching it, and some malicious insect took a surprisingly painful bite out of the skin of my ankle. On a good day I would easily follow that guy down the hillside. Today not so much. On the left is Germany, on the right is the Czech Republic. On the German side, the trail was quite good. On the Czech side, things were trickier. The landing zone in particular was soggier than expected. But it was exactly on the border that the trail presented its most challenging phase. Second attempt. Stuck the landing. After about 3 kilometers in the trenches at the Czech border, the route turned back into Germany and followed not so technical trails for a while. But by this point, my left thigh had reached a state of permanent semi cramp. Saying I couldn't take full advantage of the easier trails would be an understatement. Even on the descent, I was barely more than walking. The route of the Zaxxon Trail loops back on itself many times in complicated ways. At one point, with still 10 kilometers to go, we were actually close enough to the finish to hear the loudspeakers. With the power to pain ratio of my thigh approaching all time lows, I seriously thought about giving up. Many thoughts entered my head when considering this, but I would have never guessed the one that kept me in the race. I didn't want to go home without a finisher's medal. The desire to add a stupid little piece of metal to a collection of equally worthless objects somehow was reason enough to keep torturing myself. As if to reward me for my decision to go on, the next section was a gentle descent. First on asphalt, then on a wonderfully soft forest trail. And after five kilometers of moderate slopes, my muscles felt surprisingly refreshed. With the final ascent ahead of me, for the first time in 25 kilometers, I felt good enough to attack. 
Turning back would also be stupid now, the sign reads. The cloud seemed angry at my newfound strength, but rain wasn't going to stop me now. One by one I was chasing down the runners in front, and I wasn't going to stop before the finish line. Going up, the mountain bike trails actually seemed much more friendly than they were in the descent. Suddenly, an arch came into view. It wasn't yet the finish line, but I knew exactly where it stood, so I knew how close I was. I looked at my watch, without falling this time, and was pleasantly surprised to see that I would still make the 4-hour mark, with 28 seconds to spare, as it turned out. Not that that's a good time for me on this course, but after all that happened, narrowly beating a round number was a victory. It was hard to remember why I had considered giving up an hour before. In his book, What I Talk About When I Talk About Running, Haruki Murakami indicates that he would like his tombstone to read, at least he never walked. I don't understand that sentiment. It's okay to walk. And when you can't walk, you crawl. It's okay to struggle. Trail running is not about velocity. It's about going the distance.